ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Good morning, tea sippers. I hope everybody's doing good today. I hope you guys had a happy Valentine's Day with your significant other. Um, so I'm finally coming back to life. <laughs> And I wanted to talk about just all of this drama that's going on with Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, Pete Davidson, Julia Fox, honey. I want to do a big breakdown on this because I've really been sitting here thinking the past two days, why is Kanye so upset? Why is Kanye so hurt? I'm getting low key angry black woman vibes, right? Because that's like the the stereotype that a lot of people like to give black women, especially when going through breakups and heartache and things like that. And a lot of times it's not even anger. It's just really hurt. So if you guys don't know, it's been a lot of back and forth with Kanye blasting everybody from his friend Kid Cudi for choosing sides with Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian. Even though Kanye low-key introduced everybody to Pete Davidson back in 2019, he seems to forget that, that he had Pete Davidson there at Kid Cudi's birthday dinner. But I digress. So Kanye's been going off. He's been giving, you know, people stalker tees. He's harassing Kim, sending her flowers on Valentine's Day, even though he knows that her Valentine's Pete Davidson. He's showing their private text messages. It's a lot of mess, honey. Let me go ahead and play you guys this video. Check all this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. ET has learned Kanye West is newly single, but he kept plenty busy on social media this Valentine's Day, including some controversial posts about ex Kim Kardashian and her romance with Pete Davidson. ET reached out to Kim's rep for comment. This, do something for my heart. On Monday, the rapper kicked things off sharing these photos. The images seemingly show a truckload of flowers Kanye delivered to Kim's house. He wrote in the caption, my vision is crystal clear. Later, Kanye shared these screenshots of text messages. The conversation is allegedly between himself and Kim, and they concern his repeated comments about Pete. You just gotta roll with it. The first message reads, you are creating a dangerous and scary environment and someone will hurt Pete and this will be all your fault. Kanye wrote alongside the snapshot, quote, upon my wife's request, please nobody do anything physical to skeet. I'm gonna handle the situation myself. In another post, Kim further explained her concerns, allegedly writing, there are dangerous people out there and this is scary and it doesn't have to be. Seemingly in response to Kanye sharing screenshots of their messages, Kim later allegedly asked, why can't you keep any of our conversations private? Kanye reacted by, well, sharing an image of Kim's alleged complaint about her privacy. He also replied to the question writing, because I got a text from my favorite person in the world. I'm your number one fan. Why wouldn't I tell everyone? I call him my boyfriend and oh, he calls you. me his girlfriend. Cute. Earlier on Monday, ET learned Kanye and Julia Fox are going their separate ways after dating a little over a month. A source told ET the two are, quote, no longer together. You kind of like connect the dots. Kanye, how are you? How are you doing today? Oh, what up, baby? How you been? Good. You with the babies today? Enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, Kanye's social media marathon comes the day after he attended Super Bowl 56, stepping out with his eldest kids, North and Saint. So we got good seats, Northy. Saint, is it good seats? Kanye donned an all black look, while eight year old North and six year old Saint sported football jerseys for the big game. And that glove right there, that was given to Ye by LA Rams player Odell Beckham Jr., who tossed him a pair before taking the field. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So it's a lot going on and it's a lot to unpack. I don't know how long this video will be. I don't even know where I'm going to go with this video, but I just hope you guys are able to follow along, right? So I remember an article that came out a few years ago. This was during the time of Insecure. And I remember it was like this huge back and forth on social media. And people were saying, is it wrong for a man to want a woman to build him up in a relationship? And a lot of females had a lot of things to say around that time. One of the treats were, I don't think guys realize that almost every woman has tried to build up a man or hold someone down. It didn't work, so she stopped. 
I'm not building a man up. It's not my job. That's not my role. That's his mother's role. I'm young and I'm building myself. I will grow with you. I will build with you. I will give you my full support and be a backbone, but build you. I will not grow simultaneously. Women are pressured to build a man, but how many men are pressured to build a woman? Then the last tweet I want to share with you, somebody else says, but it's not my job to build him. That's for God to do. A woman can't build a man. Sorry, I don't want that project. So this was like a whole conversation that went on. And so many times in our community, you do have black women who are not only building black men, but building men in general and holding them down through their trials and tribulations and things like that. Case in point, Mary J. Blige, and I'm just using her as an example. This was a woman who was a mega star, mega celebrity. You know, she's been putting in work since the early 90s. And she gets with Kendu Isaacs. Now, Kendu Isaacs, he didn't have a prominent career. Supposedly, he was some type of producer. But most people knew him for, quote unquote, managing Mary J. Blige. And so that's really what helped elevate him and elevate his status as a manager was being tied to this black woman. And Mary J. Blige really, you know, elevated him in a way where he was able to start his own little managing business and foolish of him. He started fucking some of the women that he was simply supposed to be managing. Okay. But Mary really lost in that situation because he ends up wanting all this spousal support from her. And then she wanted like $130,000 a month. He said he had become accustomed to a certain lifestyle and he didn't feel like it should change just because they're divorcing. Now, if you guys remember back in 2017, she got on social media and she said, fuck Kendu Isaacs. I fucking hate him and his whole family. I unfollowed him on IG and all of his fans need to. Hashtag strength of a woman for eight do dead day. So that was the tweet that came out. Well, later on, Mary J. Blythe came and she claimed that she was hacked. And she says, hey, guys, I was hacked with that message about Ken do. I don't hate him, his family, nor, <laughs> nor do I wish death on him. Girl, bye. <laughs> I very much believe that Mary wrote that tweet. OK, um, and it's OK. It's OK to be hurt and it's OK to be angry. So many times we're taught to just eat our pain. Right. So she came out and said that she didn't say, it, but child, I don't believe her. Long story short, it's not being announced as of yesterday that Mary J. Blige had to go on tour to pay alimony to her ex-husband, Kendu Isaacs, after the divorce. She said that she couldn't even pay her rent because whatever money she made was going straight to her judgment, which was what was owed to Kendu. So the whole situation is just, you know, it's a mess. But when somebody has helped to build somebody and cultivate their brand, it can drive you insane. And now I want to go and switch gears and talk about Kanye. I think he's having his Mary J. Blige moment. Because let's keep this real. What a lot of people are not talking about, they're not getting down to the nitty gritty. I believe that Kanye is not only hurt, but he's upset. Because not only did he elevate Kim Kardashian, he elevated that entire Kardashian clan. Okay. So let me go ahead and take y'all back, okay? Because before we talk about who Kanye elevated and helped, let's talk about who elevated and helped Kanye West, okay? So let me take y'all back to when Kanye was very humble. He was living in this apartment in New Jersey, and he was doing one of his first interviews. This was before college dropout. He didn't know who Marc Jacobs was. It's so funny to go back and watch this interview because he was so red to the fashion game. He's like, is Marc Jacobs still alive? I want to see his closet. So I want y'all to go ahead and watch this clip really quick. What's so crazy is like because of my, I tell these exact same jokes. And if I was a broke nigga, I'd be considered a perv. But now. Yeah, I want people to say shit behind my back, man. Keep them <laughs> talking, man. And then y'all looking at this like, yo, this nigga's an idiot. And that's exactly what I want you to think. So my mission is accomplished. So um, if you could peek into anybody's closet, whose closet would you peek into? Um, is Mark Jacob a real person? Yeah. He's like living and shit. 
Yeah, I want to see a Mark Jacobs closet. All right, so you guys just saw that interview, and it's so funny to see Kanye be goofy and just be himself and not have a care in the world. And a year later, he dropped College Dropout. But what people don't understand is even before he dropped College Dropout, he was with his then girlfriend. Her name is Alexis Pfeiffer. Alexis Pfeiffer was a fashion designer and a stylist. She lived in L.A. and she was with Kanye two years before he even dropped College Dropout. He was a struggling musician, struggling, you know, producer and all that stuff, making beats. And Alexis, you know, held him down. They were together and she really put him up on fashion. OK, so after he did that interview, um, you start seeing more of him and Alexis. Alexis is taking him to fashion shows in Paris. Um, one of their first fashion shows that they went to in 2008 was the Izzy My K fashion show. They also went to Dior. They went to a lot of different fashion shows. And this was big. This was something that, you know, Kanye did not know anything about this world. Kanye knew about music. That was his thing. But Alexis, she was the person who really inspired him and taught him about fashion. And to this day, she's also the curator behind her own clothing company called A Threads. And um, she's been working on this clothing line for years. And that's what she does. She's kept a very low profile. But they were together from 2002 to 2008. And I want you guys to listen to just some of the things that Alexis had to say about fashion and who inspired her. People like her grandmother taking her to fashion shows and teaching her about these designers and taking her behind the scenes to meet these designers. So y'all check this out. My first introduction to fashion was when I was about 10 years old. Uh, my grandmother would take my two cousins and I with her to fashion shows at Neiman Marcus and Saks. And I remember thinking like, you know, wow, like how is it that these girls look, you know, this amazing. So after the show was over, she would take us uh, backstage and we would get to meet the designers. And I think it was like love at first sight because I just knew that that was something that I wanted to do. I love just that whole creative part of it. All right, so you guys just saw a bit of that interview. And she did an interview one time and where she spoke about the entertainment industry. And she stated, I've learned that no matter what, you always have to be yourself, hold your head up high and have respect for yourself. I've learned that the industry can get a bad rep, but if you're able to be around certain people and experience new things, just take it as something that's good and learn from it and be inspired by it because there is definitely inspiration. And being in a high profile relationship, just keep your business to yourself. So she's she's definitely lived by that code. She doesn't speak on Kanye. She doesn't speak on his life. She's basically, you know, dealing with her fashion and dealing with what she does as a fashion designer and a stylist. So like I said, Alexis and Kanye, they met back in 2002 and they dated even before he dropped his album. So, you know, she believed in him and encouraged him and, you know, taught him about fashion and all this stuff, even before he even blew up and had any fame. They got engaged in 2006, and they even had a small feature in an interview in Harper's Bazaar, and they were in Kanye's home in Los Angeles because by 2006, after college dropout, he was making some money. They ended up ending their relationship back in 2008 because at that point, Kanye was going through a lot. He had just lost his mother, Donda, and Donda really loved Alexis. And I think Alexis was a constant reminder um, of the relationship that she had with Donda. And I think it just it took a toll on Kanye. So their relationship was never able to bounce back. And then soon after that is when he got with Amber Rose and they had their relationship. And he even, you know, definitely upgraded Amber Rose. Nobody knew who Amber Rose was until she got with Kanye. You know, she was just a stripper at the strip club. And he, you know, basically evolved her, you know, had her with the big dark shades, wearing all black. He definitely elevated her style. And then that relationship ended. Now we fast forward to Kim Kardashian. So Kim and Kanye, they had met years ago. But they initially, I think she was in one of his music videos, but they didn't really, you know, connect. 
But he's always, you know, liked Kim. It was always something that he saw in her. He's like, it's like he saw her grinding and wanting to legitimize herself in the industry. And I think he saw Kim Kardashian definitely as some type of muse. So he ends up hollering at her. Um, she goes through her divorce with Chris Humphreys. And then like a few months later, she's with Kanye West. Less than a year later, she's pregnant with Northwest. And it's kind of like this whole whirlwind, okay? Now, the Kardashians, I will never take this from Kim and the Kardashians. They already had their own brand, right? But they weren't taken seriously in places like L.A. I remember even talking to when I moved to L.A. to like a lot of my friends that I ended up making out there and even some Armenians and stuff that I met. They didn't have a lot of respect for Kim Kardashian. This was like back in 2015. They're like, oh, the Kardashians, they're a joke. They just lucked up. They're just reality TV. They're famous just to be famous. A lot of people did not respect the Kardashian brand. OK, the Kardashians were big to people like me in the Midwest, because for us in the Midwest, it's more slow in the Midwest. Right. We don't have a lot of celebrity in the Midwest. When you think of celebrities, you think of L.A. and you think of New York. Right. So it's the people in the Midwest that are watching, keeping up with the Kardashians that are following their every move and thinking, oh, my God, these girls are so famous and they're the it girls. But meanwhile, in the real circles, in the real celebrity circles, because there's levels to this shit. I'm not trying to say that they're beneath people because I hate to use that word beneath. It's such a degrading word. But I don't know what other word to use it. I don't know what other word to use. But when I say beneath. I'm talking about when you look at the hierarchy, because there's definitely a hierarchy. There's levels to this celebrity shit. They were definitely bottom tier celebrity. Reality TV, Z-list, you know, famous for a sex tape. They were not what you were considered a-list upper echelon of celebrities. Let's keep that 100. The Kim Kardashian and the Kardashian brand that you see today in 2022 was not the Kardashian brand of 2015. Okay. So they were popular amongst people in the Midwest and maybe in the South, but in LA, they were a joke. Okay. And Kim has always wanted to be in those spaces, even though she was making 50 million a year. And she had a huge following on social media that didn't mean anything because her goal was to always be an icon. She wanted to not just to be famous, just to be famous. She wanted to be a cultural icon. She wanted her names to ring bells. Like when you hear Beyonce, Jay-Z, Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson, those are cultural icons. When you hear those names, those names invoke a certain emotion. They take you back in time. If I say, no, 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 he'll be saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would take half of these people listen to this video back to a time in high school, junior high. You know what I'm saying? If I say thriller. That would take a lot of people back to the 80s. But back then, when you said Kim Kardashian, you were like, oh, uh, she's a pillow princess. She don't know how to give head. That's Ray J's, you know, side chick. That was the image when you thought of Kim Kardashian back then, you know, but she's been able to reinvent herself. So in comes Kanye West. OK, he's finally gotten his so-called dream girl, but now he wants to really elevate them. He feels like there's so much untapped potential with not only Kim Kardashian, but the entire family. And the first thing that Kanye West did, if you guys remember, if you watch Keeping Up With The Kardashians, because I did watch that show, he emptied out her entire closet. I'm talking about this was years with this shit. And you know how we are as women with our stuff. Our, our stuff is sentimental. Like, hey, I've had that since high school. I've had that since college. I'm going to fit into them jeans one day, boo. I'm going to lose these five pounds, honey. Kanye came and he wrecked shot, totally took everything out of her closet, name brand or not. Like, no, I'm going to change your entire style. Because at that point, Kim Kardashian thought she was that girl with them big ass belts, them big old sunglasses. You know what I'm saying? And that was kind of the style back then. But let's keep it real. The only red carpet events that Kim Kardashian and her family were booking back then were red carpet events for kits in L.A. OK, for boutiques. They were not on red carpets for high-end designers like 
Roberto Cavalli and Giuseppe Zanotti and Issa Laurent and all these, you know, all these high end names, Dior and, you know, all that stuff. Right. They were not doing these red carpet events. They were not even invited to these events. So this is Kim Kardashian in her early days. So when Kanye seen her style, he was like, no, we got to get rid of all of that. And he even told her to read a particular fashion book and told her, you need to read this because this is going to change your life. Everything that Alexis taught Kanye, he then was able to use Kim as his muse. OK, because remember, Alexis was a fashion person. She was the one who lived, breathed and ate fashion. Kanye was a music guy. But at this point, Kanye also wanted to get into the fashion world because he saw the untapped potential. People can dismiss Kanye and call him crazy or say he's bad. He's a bed bug. But Kanye is a low key genius because remember around this time, they didn't mix black people in fashion. As you talking about European fashion, there was no room for hip hop. They did not want anything to do with hip hop. Hip hop was beneath them. If you were famous for hip hop again, like I said, there's levels to this shit. Hip hop, reality TV, things like that were considered Z list, especially over there in Europe to those high end fashion houses who have been around for generations. We cannot have this weird black man interrupting shit over here. So then if you guys don't know what happened, this was about 13 years ago, back in 2009, Kanye was ruffling so much feathers that finally Louis Vuitton decided to give him a chance. Because Remember, people were calling him the Louis Vuitton Don back then. So he ended up debuting his Louis Vuitton sneakers. He did a collab with them back in 2009, and he was so humble and so grateful. So that's when he first kind of got his feet wet. Yeah, Mom. For me, like this is one of the biggest moments in my life because I was designing stuff from like fourth grade and went to art school and just to be a celebrity and to get the opportunity to really go in and design and pull references and to make something and create. That's the best thing about the position that I'm in, the doors that I have open that I can do something with Louis Vuitton and create something from scratch. It's just, it's just overwhelming. Shoes, of course, Kanye's collaboration with Fabrizio on the shoes. So, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm a part of a great team at, at, at Vuitton, and I, I'm very proud that everybody has their energy and their inspirations. And he said, look, if I can do a collaboration with Louis Vuitton, why can I not have my own fashion house? Why can I not have my own fashion design? And when he went to try to do that, it's like, we'll collaborate with you, black man. But you having your own fashion line, own fashion house, absolutely not. That's when he kept getting hit with doors. He kept getting doors slammed in his face. And that was a part of his breakdown that he had on the Sway in the Morning show. This was eight years ago. So fast forward a few years after the Louis Vuitton situation in 2009. Then in 2013, he went off on the Sway show, basically expressing his frustrations. We got to both sign that contract, yeah. Mark Parker. I'm going to put Mark Parker all on that Summer Jam screen. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Mark Parker, yes, I will still accept an investment in Donda. I got some more ideas that don't involve shoes. But if you guys are investing in the arts, mm -hmm. y'all want to invest in this school in Brazil, y'all want to go to Africa, I'm standing up and I'm telling you I am Warhol. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. Walt Disney, mm -hmm. Nike, Google. Now, who's going to be the Medici family and stand up and let me create more? Or do you want to marginalize me till I'm out of my moment? Or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself? How, fact, Sway? You take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. Kanye. I've been doing this more than you. Doing what you ain't more got than me? Come on, chill out. You bro. ain't got the answers. Kanye, you ain't got the bro, answers. I'm asking you. You a ain't question. been doing the education. Bro. You ain't been doing the education. Kanye. Calm down. You don't have the answers, though. Calm down. Because you're trying to give me advice about no, something. No, 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 you ain't, no, no. You ain't got the answers. You ain't spent $13 million of your I own money trying to empower right. yourself. Yes, but I spent hundreds of thousands and doing putting out clothing lines at a smaller degree. 
All I'm asking you, I'm, and then, but, and but, it but, ain't but, no Ralph though. Uh, it, it ain't Ralph but, but, level. But let me ask you this: I'm asking, what's you, the name of your clothing line? We don't know. Kanye, you know what I'm saying? Because I lost money, but that's not exactly. That and I could lose money on a higher level too. And that's don't what think I'm just you. because. Wait, hold up, wait, hold don't up, think because I got the most or the let least me, let money. Let me finish my question, dog. Man, because, no, no, man. Let me hear the question. You don't have the answers. I'm asking you for the answer. It's a question. Why is it that you can't? You have money. I just you have told investors. you I lost the money because I did not have the knowledge okay, of how so to you do don't it the have right money. way. So you don't have the money to do it. That's your answer. You ain't got to turn up, man. This ain't no fucking show, man. No, I'm but, talking to you as a homie. No, it ain't no homie, man, man because uh, the thing is, the bottom line is, man, I'm everybody, saying, you ain't got to turn up. You, like, wait, you ain't got to no, you, hold up. You wait, 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 hold ain't, up. No, ain't no hold up. Listen, bro. Ain't no hold up. It ain't got to be no hold up. I'm asking you a question. Ain't no hold up. I'm asking you a question. Ain't no hold up. What do you mean it ain't no hold up, man? We here talking as civilized people. I'm trying to understand your world because when I go to your concert, I'm curious about what you're saying. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you the questions. Well, I'm explaining to you okay, what it is. Okay, but you ain't got to turn up on me man to man, dog. Fuck these mics. We could turn all this shit off. You ain't got to do this. It's cool. I love you, bro. But you ain't got to turn up. Ain't no, don't try to embarrass us. I'm not trying to embarrass y'all. What I'm trying to say to y'all is... This industry of what I'm trying to get into, ain't nobody never broke down. Ain't nobody broke down. We all slaves. So I ain't trying to disrespect you on your show. We all slaves or something. about my show, yeah. I ain't trying to disrespect you, period. Let okay. me talk if you're going to have me talk. We all slaves. We all slaves. And y'all ain't experienced nothing right here but a moment from a movie out of glory. Back in the days, the slaves had enough money they could buy their own freedom. We all say we slaves to Nike, we slaves to Benz, we slaves to public perception, we slaves to not looking, you know, what somebody going to say after the interview. Why you let Kanye do that? You we got this new thing called classism. It's racism's cousin. This is what we do to hold people back. This is what we do. And we got this other thing that's also been working for a long time where you don't have to be racist anymore. It's called self-hate. It works on itself. It's like real estate of racism. Where just like that, when someone comes up and says something like, I am a God, everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a God. I just told you. That's who I think I am. Would it have been better if I had a song that said, I am a nigga? Or if I had a song that said, I'm a gangster? Or if I had a song that said, I am a pimp? All those colors and patinas fit better on a person like me, right? But to say you are a God... Especially when you got shipped over to the country that you're in and your last name is a slave owner's. Whoo, them interviews bring back a lot of memories. I mean, I've been following Kanye for years and he's always spoken what he thought was his truth, even though he didn't know the best ways to articulate them. But I love that back and forth with Sway because you could tell it was genuine love and concern. And Sway was just trying to get to the crooks of why Kanye was going on these constant rants. And even when he did the second interview where he was saying that he felt like he's God and he was explaining that in more context, that was very powerful. So Around this time in 2013, Kanye is going on these huge rants. You know, he's raving. He just wants to get into the industry, but he's coming across racism and discrimination. And then finally, you know what I'm saying, Adidas finally gives him that chance after Nike only wanted a collab. But Adidas finally gave him full control. And they were willing to back his vision. And I think that's what I respect most about Adidas is that they did just give him a chance when everybody else was turning him down. And since then, he's been able to turn the Yeezys brand into its own fashion house. Maybe it's not Louis Vuitton. Maybe it's not Gucci. But when you hear the word Jesus, it's very high end. It's very expensive. OK, and a lot of people rock with it and can't front. Yeezys are some of the most comfortable damn shoes I've ever had. I love me some Yeezy Boost. So he's done a lot and around this time when he was going through this metamorphosis was also around the time that he was also working on building kim and the kardashian brand as well so at that point kanye's you know brain was ticking and he was thinking okay they won't necessarily let my black ass in but maybe i can get in there with kim because she has the complexion for protection she's a white woman so I can get in there with Kim and then eventually I'll be able to start my own line and, you know, things like that. And also, let's not forget, 
there's a portion of America that didn't know who Kanye West was. They're not into hip hop. They don't know his backstory. So when he got with Kim Kardashian, that also opened him up to those people in the Midwest, those, you know, white people in like the cornfields of Iowa, who probably at one point hated him for years after what he did to Taylor Swift. Remember, that was like his main introduction to all of America was him interrupting Taylor Swift. So he kind of had a bad stigma attached to him after that. So in a way, him getting with Kim Kardashian also helped to I don't know, more or less humanize him and make him more palatable to a lot of people who had already crossed him off. So not only was Kanye able to help Kim Kardashian with her dreams of being seen in high fashion and being seen in those type of circles, he was also able to use the Kardashians, you know, homegrown, you know, Midwest support, Southern support and things like that. People who are outside of like New York and L.A., just like the regular middle class, middle America who watch their show. He was able to tap into that market because those are the people who are going to be into Adidas. You get what I'm saying? It's going to be regular people who are not so much into high fashion, but they're into sportswear. They're into Adidas. They're into Nikes. So trust and believe. I believe that all of this at the time was going in Kanye's head when he took on the job of making Kim his muse and, you know, really trying to get her up there because at the end of the day, this was building both of their presence. It was building both of their fan bases. It was getting them a lot of attention on social media I believe me you know just on the outside looking in this is what he was doing back then like let's start cleaning you up let's start making you more high fashion more palatable let's make it when people see you they see a fashion brand and not Ray J's you know bust down okay and that is when he started those steps. Not only did he help her, but like I said, he reinvented that whole family. Even when you watch the opener of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, remember it was like real cheesy, the backdrop used to fall, and Kendall and Kylie were running around like little kids. And then as you saw the later seasons, they upgraded it. Everybody was dressed in black. Everybody looked at chic, even Rob. He upgraded that whole family. Another thing that Kanye did when she decided to start Skims, he designed the Skims logo. Initially, he wasn't feeling the logo that she first had. And so he decided to reinvent that logo. And he also helped with hiring photographers, approving the models, selecting the packaging. These are all words that were coming from Kim Kardashian. On November 6th, Chris and Kim K took the stage with New York Times at the Deal Book Conference along with Kanye West who joined in from the audience. They spoke to Andrew Ross Sorkin about building their empire, taking over social media and where they see themselves in a decade from now. But some of the most important revelations in this sit-down interview came from Kim and Kanye. It all started with Kim talking about the one time she said no to a business opportunity because Kanye told her to and she was rewarded for it big time. She recalled a time when she was asked to post for a fast fashion brand that managed to rip off Yeezy's designs and color palettes and was being offered $1 million to do it. When Kanye asked her to refrain from it, Kim understood and turned the offer down. She then said, for Mother's Day, he handed me an envelope and it was a check for a million dollars saying thank you for not posting for the other brand. And then, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or if I have, and a contract to be an owner in Yeezy as a thank you. So there is power in saying no sometimes. Kim also revealed that she and Kanye basically made all decisions together and were jointly invested in creating her shapewear brand Skims, which was previously called Kimono. Kim dubbed Kanye as her ghost stylist and her ghost creative director and even revealed that Kanye drew the logo. He apparently sat Kim down for a two hour long discussion and told her why the original packaging and design of the brand was not so amazing and she realized she'd have gotten bored of it easily. She added, he picked our photographers, was involved in the castings for the models for skims and colorways. I mean, everything you could think of. Now back in 2013, Kim Kardashian and the Kardashian crew were never allowed to the Met Gala. The Met Gala was a very high end event only for select A-listers. Not even all A-listers could get there. But because people had been seeing Kanye at these fashion shows and, you know, he's sitting up front with Kim Kardashian. Anna Winter decided to give him a ticket and said that he could invite 
a plus one. So that plus one ended up being Kim Kardashian and she made her Met Gala debut pregnant in this outfit that people coined the couch outfit. But that was what really stamped her on the map to the high fashion world of designers is the fact that she was at the Met Gala and she only got in because of Kanye West. Remember when Kanye West was taking her on this, and I don't want to call it a hobo tour, but you know, that's one of the words that I use on this channel. When he was taking on this high fashion hobo tour, they were sitting front seat at all of the top fashion shows that year in Europe. And you have seen them sitting next to Jay-Z and Beyonce. And you could tell by Beyonce's vibe, she was not here for it. Because again, there's levels to this shit. And people are looking at Kanye West like, you are way up here as far as celebrity, music. You know what I'm saying? You're one of the top artists in the world. What are you doing slumming around with the Kardashian? It was not a good look for Kanye's brand for, you know, people on the outside looking in, some of his closest friends. Remember, Kim Kardashian is what caused the rift between Kanye, Jay-Z, and Beyonce. Because she thought now that she was in with Kanye, she was going to become best friends with Beyonce. And Beyonce wanted no parts. You can hang with Lala and, you know, all these other people. But me and you are not going to fraternize, ma'am. Okay? And Beyonce has kept it moving to this day. But that is how she first got her debut was on the red carpet Met Gala. That was an official red carpet, not her modeling for kids in L.A. OK, another thing, like I said, that Kanye helped Kim with was Kim became very close friends with Kanye West's photographers. Kanye had worked with the same photographer since 2008. They're the ones who famously shot her nudes in their photography book. She also worked with Vanessa Beecroft um, and Vanessa had been working with Yeezy and been a part of the the Yeezy design team since 2008 so she definitely had an eye for you know fashion and what things would look good so Kanye had her take all of you know Kim's pictures for her skim campaign and that has really blown Kim up I mean this has brought her to like billionaire status this whole skims thing another thing that Kanye did was he helped not only transform all the Kardashians into fashion icons. And if you guys don't know, he he really helped Kylie and Kendall break into the fashion industry as well. Remember when Kanye first debuted his Yeezy brand, um, the season one fashion show, he had Kylie attend as a guest and then he had Kendall and Kim hit the runway. They modeled the Yeezy looks. So that kind of woke people up because at that time Yeezy was really blowing up. Nobody expected his Yeezy brand to take off in the way that it did. And then to have Kendall rip the runway at his show that made designers look at her differently. And then at that point, Kendall started getting booked. <laughs> really? And now in 2022, Kendall is one of the highest paid Highest paid supermodels in the world. So she's now one of the highest paid models. And her first gig really came from Kanye being Kanye's muse and Kanye giving her a chance. Because remember, there was a lot of pushback initially with Kendall. And I really didn't agree with the pushback. I thought it was very unfair. People were saying, oh, well, she shouldn't be on here. She's a reality TV star. She shouldn't be ripping, you know, fashion uh, runways in Paris, Milan and things like that because she's Kim Kardashian's sister. It's nepotism. It's because she has a big following. That might be partly true, but we're not going to act like Kendall did not hit the genetic lottery. And that's what I didn't respect. I thought it was kind of disingenuous to just say it's only because of nepotism. Now, she was four foot eleven. And 150 pounds, I could say, you know, damn well, that's nothing but nepotism because she does not have a high fashion body to work the runways of Europe. But let's keep it real. The girl is five foot ten, about 100 pounds, drop dead gorgeous, super thin. Her body is no different than any other model that walks those runways. So I thought it was unfair that people only blamed her rise to nepotism. Because she technically does have a supermodel physique. So when all the other fashion houses were turning her down and Kris Jenner was trying to, you know, get her book out there and get her seen, they were turning her down. They didn't want to have nothing to do with her. But it wasn't until Kanye legitimized her and had her walking in the Yeezy fashion show that that really blew up Kendall. And now, like I said, she's one of the highest paid models. And some people are upset about that. They feel like she doesn't deserve that. So with that being said... Kim Kardashian literally goes from promoting any and everything. Remember in the early phases of the Kardashian career, 
which was basically defined by Kris Jenner, Kris Jenner was literally agreeing to anything that was coming their way. You know, at one point, Kim Kardashian was literally the face of Charmin toilet paper. She was on the red carpet with the Charmin bears. You know what I'm saying? She was a face of anti-acne cream, hair removal. I know y'all remember when she was also the face of Men's of Milkshakes. So they literally had her like just shouting out anything for a bag, attaching herself to anything for a bag. And when Kanye came in, he shut that shit down. He was like, you guys are a brand and you guys need to act like it and stop shouting out people like Charmin's and milkshakes and, you know, lipstick lines. Create your own cosmetic line. He also inspired her to start her business venture with KKW, which is a Kim Kardashian beauty line. As well as, you know, Kendall Jenner doing the whole lip kit thing and, and things like that. He basically helped them. And he was heavily involved in, you know, cultivating even their makeup line, the packaging and, and helping them, you know, understand that they're a brand and they can't attach themselves to everything. So she made a huge business venture and made a lot of money off of her cosmetics line, off of her skims. And a lot of that was in part to Kanye West helping out in the background. Like I said, he definitely helped to legitimize the entire family. The entire family was invited to things that they would have never been invited to before. You know, after a while, you saw um, Chris Jenner and Corey Gamble and Kendall, Kylie, Courtney, and all of them sitting front row at some of the top fashion shows in the world. You know, where you need to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And you better be a a a a a list to be even let in the building, let alone sitting in the front row. So he totally changed that. And even Kim has admitted to this. Kim has stated that her husband very much played a part in helping her break into the fashion industry and in helping to change body standards, you know, making some of the dresses bigger as opposed to fitting a size zero to a three and things like that. Like he definitely played a huge role in upgrading her. So yeah, watch this clip. This is a big change from year one. I wrote out all my, I said year one, 2013, Ricardo Tishi from Givenchy. I was just Kanye's plus one. Um, nobody really wanted me there. Like, then I'm like, year two, we had our first boat cover. No one, um, I finally got my invite, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna say year seven, cover girl. We officially made it. Givenchy's red carpet at New York Fashion Week was a star-spangled affair, featuring Oscar-winning actresses and Grammy-winning musicians. But it was this girl's arrival that caused a paparazzi frenzy. Today, it's hard to remember the time when Kim Kardashian was shunned by the fashion elite. She is now the must-get celebrity on every front row. I mean, it's crazy to even think that. My body type is not your typical model body type. It's exciting that I, I feel that designers are seeing different bodies, you know, shapes and styles and willing to take that risk. Of course, that's not why designers took the risk to dress her. The fashion world could no longer ignore Kim's burgeoning presence. This year, she was voted one of Time Magazine's most influential people. She's the most followed person on Instagram, star of a top-rated reality show, and author of a best-selling book. Every time I travel and you have to fill out your job description, I write something different every time. So sometimes I say I'm in sales, I'm an author, perfumer. I literally write different things every time. Hi. <laughs> Kim invited CNN Style to her dress fitting with Givenchy ahead of its New York show. What is like Ricardo's like number one option for me? Okay, so I think he wants... I like to go there and then work backwards. Okay, let's do it. Givenchy's Ricardo Tichy will always be special to Kim. He was the first designer to have her on his front row and dress her for the Met Ball in New York. He even designed her wedding dress. Ricardo is the first designer that took a chance on me. I'm so grateful that he saw a vision and was willing to dress me because no other designers were at that time. Special people were like, how can you invite Kim to your show? And then it's the same people after a few years. They will pay her gold and diamonds to attend the show or they pretended to be her friends today. 
Kim has now graced the covers of Vogue in America, Brazil and Spain, as well as magazines such as Love and W. She attributes her fashion transformation to one man. I mean, I really think that my relationship with my husband, Kanye, really changed everything. I mean, back in the day, I thought I had the best style. Like, I thought I, I look back at outfits and I'm, like, mortified. I remember one day he brought me Kareen Rotfield's book and was like, you should be, like, studying this book. This is, like, the fashion Bible. And I was like, who's Kareen? Like, I, had, I knew nothing. And he said, watch, one day she's going to style you. It's really cool. Back in the fitting room, Kim thinks she's found the perfect outfit for the Givenchy show. Lace, feminine, and menswear is like all about Givenchy. I love it. Keeping up with the Kardashians is now in its 11th season. When our interview was interrupted by the appearance of Sister Kendall, it felt as though reality was imitating reality TV. Kendall! Get over here. I'm mic'd. I can't move. In the fashion world together. We are so, you're my fashion icon. I was talking about you earlier. There can be no doubt that Kim is a strong and single-minded woman. You have to be to generate the $53 million she made this year alone. All right, are we going for this then? I love it. Should we take a picture, just see? Yeah. Yet when it comes to her style, it seems she's happy for Kanye and Ricardo to take on the leading roles. Former husband and wife have a great deal of respect for one another. In fact, the Keeping Up with the Kardashians actress has disclosed that her separation with her spouse is still her business partner and oversees her skin's business. The 41-year-old actress stated that the 44-year-old rap legend is a partner in her loungewear apparel line, Skims, which she founded in 2019 in an interview with WSJ Magazine. The 41-year-old star said, He has a piece of Skims himself and gives the team inspiration but also information. I think he enjoys the process. The KKW Beauty and the KKW Fragrance founder also stated, Kanye will always be the most inspirational person to me. Kim went on to speak about her temporary aesthetic transformation in the months following her breakup from Kanye, noting that she's back to minimalism after her experimenting. I had a few moments, I had some fun, she said, but I'm back to minimalism. Kanye's ingenuity has affected more than just Skims and Kim's own clothing. For a different assignment earlier this month, the KKW beauty entrepreneur apparently took inspiration from her ex-husband. After many reports reported that Kim had quietly enlisted his assistance and support ahead of her Saturday Night Live hosting debut, the 44-year-old rapper was credited with assisting his estranged wife. Kim was consulted with Kanye and asked for feedback, a source tells E! News. She values his opinion creatively and artistically. They've talked about some ideas, and he has been very supportive. All right, so you guys saw what Kim had to say. So like I said, he introduced her to some of the biggest designers from Givenchy to Balmain. You know, like I said, now you see the family sitting at the front row. Kanye had been friends with Ricardo uh, TC. He was a former Givenchy creator. Um, he had been friends with Kanye for like seven years before he even knew Kim. So he was able to get them in and get the family in um, into these spaces that they would not have been able to get into. OK, but with that being said, he was also able to use these muses that he built up because let's not forget. It was Kim Kardashian's brand that had blown up via Kanye to be now be seen as fashion icons and people to look to as far as fashion. Now he's dressing Kim and her sisters in Yeezy. Now every time you see Kim or the kids, they're all wearing Yeezy because that is her husband's brand. The whole family's wearing Yeezys. Remember during Yeezy season six, Kim was literally a walking ad for Kanye. So he was able to build her up, build up the family, build up the brand 
which in turn helped his Yeezy brand, which in turn helped to legitimize him in the fashion industry. Now you have Louis Vuitton working with the Virgil, rest in peace to him. But before Kanye, that wouldn't even have been an option. They wouldn't have dared work with a black hip hop inspired, you know what I'm saying, type designer. But now you see this crossover and this merging of high end and hip hop. And a lot of that is thanks to Kanye. And a lot of that is also thanks to Kanye's genius and vision that he saw in Kim and the Kardashians. So I say all that to say this, right? I feel like the reason why Kanye is so upset is because he's seen all of his hard work, his genius, everything that he put into the Kardashian brand to blow them up and get them to the next level. Because again, he didn't make them. So let's make that very clear. I'm not saying that he made them and I'm not saying that they weren't anything before they got with him. He legitimized them. That is the difference. Okay. He legitimized them and he took them to a level that they could not have gotten to without his fame and his connections. Just like Kanye could not have gotten his connections without Alexis Pfeiffer. Okay? So that's all I'm saying. The reason that Kanye is very upset is because after all of these years, because they've been together now, what, eight years? They're divorcing officially. Now you have this goofy white dude from SNL. He's about to basically come in and reap the rewards from all of Kanye's hard work. And I think that's what's really bothering Kanye that's why he's calling this dude skeet instead of Pete Davidson he's calling him skeet and he's saying that he'll handle him it really bothers him because he feels like Pete Davidson is beneath him he's beneath Kim and yet and still this goofy guy from SNL because he's always just been seen as a goofy comic on SNL who dated a few bad bitches like Ariana Grande and whoever else and now he's with one of the biggest celebrities in the world. Him being tied to Kim Kardashian has elevated his star power like you could not imagine. Nobody was checking for Pete Davidson like that outside of comedic circles. Now he's being talked about in major publications. You're seeing him with Kim and he's kissing Kim. So it's almost like all of Kanye's hard work is now being benefited by this white comic. And I really think that is what's bothering him. Granny, yeah, he probably does want his family back. And he wants his kids to be raised in, you know, household with the mother and the father. And I get that. But I think the crux of it is he really helped to elevate them. And now this new guy who's nowhere near their level financially, fame wise, any of that is not benefiting. But the thing that bothers me with that as well is that what Kanye doesn't realize is, yes, Kim Kardashian is definitely an upgrade and is upgrading Pete Davidson. But what he doesn't realize is that he did it again, low key with Julia Fox. Once again, you've plucked this woman out of and I'm not going to say obscurity because, of course, she had a fan base. People knew who she was. I didn't know who the hell she was. I hadn't I've never heard of Julia Fox before she got with Kanye. And he basically tried to do the same thing with her where he tried to make her his new muse. And have her dressed like Kim Kardashian, looking like Kim Kardashian. There's even a video where he kind of grabs her and he snatches her. It's like, you're my muse. You're to stand here like my wife. Check this video out. All right, so you guys just saw that video of Julia Fox and basically Kanye snatching her. You know, like, no, you need to stand by me. You're my muse. You're here to be seen with me. And now it's being announced that they broke up. But again, who benefited from that relationship? That relationship did nothing for Kanye. It was a joke. She has benefited. She's even talking about coming out with a book. So once again, Kanye West is taking his power his influence in his money to legitimize another woman that was not well known to the public and trying to turn her into a muse. And this situation has benefited her way more than it's benefited Kanye. But you've low key done it with Julia, but now you're low key feeling away because Kim is going to do the same thing with Pete Davidson if this relationship lasts, if this is just not some, you know, rebound. He could now be seen 
on a scale as big as a Kanye and Kanye had to fight and scrape and deal with racism, discrimination and everything else to get to where he's at. And then to see skeet just skeet on in and try and, you know, take that spot. I believe that is what's really bothering Kanye with this entire situation. You know, I believe that he feels like he really elevated that family. And now, you know what I'm saying? They're, the family has benefited greatly. Several of them are billionaires now because of Kanye's vision, his help, his connections. And now he's kind of been left to the side. And that's really hurting his ego as a man. And it's also hurting him because he does not have his family. You know, he's not waking up to his family, but let's keep it real. Even before all this drama, him and Kim weren't living together. Remember, he was living in Wyoming. And Kim was saying that she didn't want a marriage like that where her and her husband live in two different states. She wanted her family in the house. She wanted them to be together. But Kanye chose to, you know, go live wherever and not be there in the household. And sometimes as people, you don't realize what you have until it's gone. And I think that's what's really bothering Kanye as well. He thought it was sweet that he could come and go and she'd still be there. And eventually she woke up and she moved on to somebody else. So it's going to be very interesting to see what else comes of this. You know, I wish them both peace because divorce is not easy. And again, I didn't make this video to like not Kim or act like, you know, Kim wasn't that girl before Kanye, but I had to put it in context to show you how much Kanye not only helped her, but helped her brand and trust and believe Kim knows this because if you guys don't know, she recently did an interview with Vogue. This interview just came out February 9th, 2022. And in the interview, Kim Kardashian admits it's scary to navigate the fashion world after her divorce from Kanye West. So this is what was printed. In a recent interview with Vogue, Kim Kardashian explains that West often provided her with insights into upcoming fashion trends. However, without him there, things are feeling a bit scary. I always think what will be next, she said, because I always had Kanye who knew exactly what the next fashion era would be for me. And there's something scary about being out there on your own, but also something liberating. Then she goes on to say, who knows? I might just be in skims and be so comfortable and casual and wear no makeup. That might be what I feel like representing to the world. Maybe it's just not that serious. So as you see, even Kim is admitting that, you know, she's scared. She's scared for this new venture. Kanye really played a big part in overhauling her brand and connecting her and getting her to where she's at now. And one thing I do respect about Kim is that she's always giving Kanye his props. She's never tried to act like it was just because of her and her family and her momager. She's always giving him his props about, you know, what he's done for her, the people that he's introduced her to, you know, the way that he styled her. So she's always made sure to sing him his praises. So in conclusion of this video slash documentary, because it's about to be an hour long, I take us back to the beginning when I started this. Is it worth holding someone down and helping to build them up? Do you have your ego in check enough to know that I'm going to build this person up. I'm going to put my resources, my connections, my money behind them. And if it takes off, and we end up breaking up or going our separate ways, is your ego in check enough to be able to deal with that? And to be honest, I think a lot of people's egos are not in check enough. I don't even know if I have my ego in check like that, where I could do what Kanye did and not feel away, or where I could do what Alexis did and not feel away. You know, Alexis could be out here blasting them and saying, hey, I put you on the fashion and this, this and that. She's never done that. So I think it's a lot of nuances to the situation with Kim and Kanye. I think, yes, a big part of it is their family breaking up, right? Divorce is a very painful thing. You know, the kids are greatly affected. The husband, the wife, you know, we all wear our emotions differently. But then you got to think, too, on their level, this is a business empire. They have literally built a 
you know, a conglomerate, a huge brand, a huge fashion brand, makeup brand. They're so intertwined with each other financially as far as their brand. You know, Kanye owns some of Skims. Kim owns some of Yeezys. I mean, it's a lot that's intertwined. And like the old saying goes, it's sometimes cheaper to keep her. You know, so I think it's just a lot of things going on right now in Kanye's head. He's finally waking up and seeing how much he stands to lose if they go their separate ways. Can they still be friends and help each other in business on the back end? Yes, they can. But in all reality, is that going to still happen if people's egos don't get in check? If he's so upset and he's trying to chase off any guy that might be making her happy, that's going to make her want to distance herself away from him and not want to deal with him in business, even though he is what's good for her brand. You know, she's even admitted that she's scared because she doesn't know what's next. So I think it's a lot of things really going on and people are not looking at the deeper level of their relationship. People are just looking at the you know the the surface level him and julia and all this drama and julia beefing with azealia banks and kanye calling out kid cuddy and pete davison acting unbothered and smoking a joint on the red carpet but if you really pull back the onions maybe you can kind of understand that a lot of that bravado a lot of that what i call noise because that's what it is to me a lot of that noise that kanye is making on social media is somebody who's scared to see what he created, to see his muse slip out of his hands. I mean, it's no different than, you know, working on a sculpture all these months. You're working on a sculpture, and then all of a sudden, somebody knocks the table, and the sculpture just breaks into a thousand pieces. That's heartbreaking for a sculptor, you know what I'm saying? So I think that what Kanye is going through is, is it's deep. You know, this is th these people have been a part of his life for the past eight years. And he's literally sat back and watched how much they have all not just Kim, but the entire family has been have been able to elevate based off of his thought patterns and his creative ideas and things like that. And to see that all coming to an end, I believe he's having a mental breakdown. And that's not to excuse his behavior. That's not what this video is about. It's not to excuse his behavior. It's not to downplay his behavior because I don't think that's okay. You know, the harassing of her on social media, the harassing of Pete Davidson, it's not a good look. And he's finally realizing that as well because he recently yesterday wrote a post where he apologized about that. So let me read that to you guys really quick. Yesterday, Kanye posted... I've learned that using all caps make people feel like I'm screaming at them. I'm working on my communication. I can benefit from a team of creative professionals, organizers, mobilizers, and community leaders. Thank everybody for supporting me. I know sharing screenshots was jarring and came off as harassing Kim. I take accountability. I'm still learning in real time. I don't have all the answers. To be a good leader is to be a good listener. All right, so you guys just heard me read that post. So I think maybe he's doing some reflecting, and hopefully that's what he does. Hopefully he can let this go, and if it's meant to be, it will come back together. Sometimes couples just need to break away from each other, you know, and they just need a breather and, and you know, need to separate and clear their heads and then maybe come back together in the future. But if he continues just blasting her on social media and posting private messages, all he's going to do is push her and the family further away. And I think at this point, Kanye needs a lot of good people and people who really genuinely care about him and care about his mental health. He needs those type of people around him. So, y'all, that is the end of my video slash documentary, I guess. I don't know, honey. But I want to know y'all's thoughts. What do you guys think about this? I think I covered a lot of bases in this hour. I hope you guys enjoy this deep dive into Kanye and Kim's relationship. What do you guys think about all this? And would you have your ego in check enough where if you built somebody up like a Mary J. Blige who helped to hold down and build up can do, would you have your ego in check enough when that relationship finally crumbles? And in the case of Mary, Kendu turned on her and got her having a tour to pay her spousal support. Whereas here, in the case of Kim and Kanye, you know, Kim is a whole nother entity at this point. At this point, her brand is probably just as big or if not on the same level as Kanye's brand. And to see her walk off with somebody of a lower quote unquote stature like Pete Davidson is a blow to Kanye's ego. So in my personal opinion, I think all of this, everything I've discussed in the past hour should be used as a cautionary tale. 
So many times women allow themselves to be muses to their own detriment, to the point where they feel stifled, they have no personality, they have no freedom, they feel kind of boxed in. And on top of that, like the old saying goes, be careful who you build with. Some people will use you for your foundation, then finish the structure with someone else. So I think people should remember that. I think the whole Kimye situation should be a cautionary tale because in a way he did help to build her and help to cultivate her brand. She also in return helped to build him and make him more quote unquote mainstream with middle America, especially after the whole Taylor Swift debacle. This definitely, you know, helped his brand as far as, you know, showing him as a family man and how involved he was with the Kardashians. So sometimes we don't build with the right people and it comes back to haunt us. Just like with Alexis, she took Kanye to fashion week and taught him so much. She taught Kanye all the things that her grandmother taught her about fashion only for Kanye to kind of quote unquote run off and go build that with somebody else. So I just take this more as a cautionary tale to just be very mindful of who you build with and also, you know, keep your ego in check. And understand that just because you're building with that person does not mean that you will finish that structure with that person, nor does it mean that you own that person. So on that note, thank you guys so much for taking time out to listen to this hour breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So I want to know y'all's thoughts. Go ahead and leave a comment. Um, make sure you guys like the video. This took a lot of work. Um, hopefully it does not get demonetized, child. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But you guys can always feel free to support me on other platforms like Patreon and on the YouTube membership. On top of that, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel because they tend to unsubscribe people from here. And feel free to share the video. But most of all, I want to know your thoughts on this entire situation. So I'll talk to y'all later. Enjoy your day. Deuces.